Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Division upon division. I don't know whether this one is long division or short division. So, father against the son, mother against the daughter. Then, then do father, daughter-in-law against mother-in-law, mother-in-law against... So, is this short or long division? Please answer me. Short or long division? So, now I'm asking you, whom are you divided against? Wife against husband. Husband against wife. Some have been married and they are not sleeping in the same room. I go. But it's true. The husband is in one room. The wife is in another. They are divided against each other. The wife has taken the bedroom. The husband sleeps in the sitting room. And the children see this. And they ask themselves, is this marriage? If this is marriage, I'm not entering no. Parents are against their children. The children seem not to understand what their parents are saying. A gap in generation. But no matter what, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And we pray in this Mass that peace may locate you. Amen. No matter the cause of the division that we are going through in our marriages, in our family life, at our workplaces, we pray that Jesus will let us throw all those causes away and hold on to him who is the Prince of Peace. Amen. May you know peace in your life. Amen. May you know peace at your workplace. Amen. May you know peace within yourself. But sometimes you don't even believe that things will be better for you. You doubt the future. You doubt that good things can come your way. You are not at peace with yourself. Your mind is divided against your spirit. Your spirit is divided against your body. I am praying that peace may come into your life. Amen. Amen. Jesus tells us that he stands at the door of our heart and is knocking. Anyone who will open up to him, he will enter and dine with that person. We pray that as we celebrate this Mass, we we'll open our hearts as Jesus knocks, that he may enter and dine with us. Amen. But it's not going to be easy. In our first reading, we see the plight of a man of God, Jeremiah. Jeremiah has preached, and his words were not the words that the people wanted to hear. You see, sometimes when you go to church, you, you, you want to hear beautiful things. But God does not want you to hear beautiful things. When he looks at what you are doing, the things you must hear should be things that are bitter. Things that must challenge you. So when the words of challenge are coming, you say, mm, this is not for me. But, but it's for who? Oh, enter your word here. Hey, dear father, you can hear the radio. Who today you go? With the swallow. So Jeremiah told the people not what they wanted to hear, but what God had asked him to tell them. So now the princes, the, 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 the royal people, they've gone to the king, Zedekiah, and they are telling him, see, this guy, Jeremiah, we ought to put him to death. Because the words that he's preaching, he's demoralizing our soldiers. And he's weakening the hands of the men in this city. We don't need people who act as chickens. We want people who act as lions and tigers. But his West is not doing this. We have to kill him. What had Jeremiah said? So Jeremiah had told the people that their city was going to be taken. That their temple was going to be raised to the ground. That they will be sent into exile. And this they didn't want to accept. For you to, 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 be, to, to understand clearly why the people wouldn't want to accept the words of Jeremiah, you have to move to the second books of Kings, chapter 18 and 19. In these two chapters, the Assyrians had conquered Judah. At this time, the, 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 the kingdom of, of, of Israel was divided. We had Judah, then we also have Israel. Now, those who were in Judah, they have been conquered. And now the Assyrians had turned their face towards Israel. There we have Jerusalem. And you see, the one who was leading them, their king was Sennacherib. And Sennacherib was a very mighty man when it comes to war. So he had led it to the city of Jerusalem. 
waiting to conquer them. Now, he will lay siege for years and will not be able to conquer them. Now, we are told that God will send one of his angels and go and cause commotion in the camp of Sennacherib and the Assyrians. So, they will pack their things and they will leave. So now this will give the Israelites the, 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 the sense of confidence that, see, as far as we have the Lord on our side, as far as we have the temple residing with us, as far as we have the Ark of the Covenant, see, no evil will come to us. Nobody can do us thing because we have the temple with us. Now in Jeremiah chapter 7, Jeremiah goes into the temple and the people had gathered for worship. And he gives them a sermon and tells them, Steve, you have put your faith in the physical structure, but not in God. And because of this, you are living very evil lives. You are cheating the poor. And those who are already oppressed, you are still oppressing them. The poor, the widow, the orphan, you are not taking care of them. And you have steeped yourself in sexual immorality. Everything that God has told you not to do, you are doing it. And you are saying that, see, as far as you have the temple with us, no calamity will befall us. I am telling you, this temple will be raised to the ground. And all of us, he included himself, will be taken into exile. So this is the background. And this, they wouldn't accept. So they went to the king and they told the king, see, we have to kill him. And the king who had the power to save the life of Jeremiah, who say, do with him as you want. If you have the power to save someone, may you not condemn the person. Amen. Sometimes all you have to do is to stand your ground and say, no, but we have become so important to the extent that we can't even talk. You are the king for crying out loud. You must save the people who are under you, provided they are doing the right thing. Why will we allow evil to increase. Jeremiah was just speaking the truth. And the king will tell the people, do with him as you want. May you never take a cue from this king that he wouldn't do the right thing. And we even mandate people to put Jeremiah or the people who are innocent and are trying to put us on the path of righteousness into the dungeon, into the well. Save people. Don't condemn them. When you have the power to save, save. So the people too will take Jeremiah and they will put him in a well. Now you must understand that the well in which they put Jeremiah belonged to the son of the king by name Malkia. So you know they are going to put a man of God in your well and you wouldn't say anything. Some of us will not go out to do evil. But we will support with our silence. That's exactly what Saul did. When the Jews were stoning Stephen, he wouldn't take a stone to throw at Stephen, but he would allow the people to remove their cloaks and put it at his feet so that they can now swing their arms with all the vim and kill that man. Sometimes, silence means consent. So, as Malkiah would not say, hey, don't use my well, then it means, or it meant that he allowed or he consented to that evil deed of the Jews. Somebody is going to rob and they'll come for your gun. You didn't join them. You are more than an armed robber. Somebody wants to cut corners and you're telling him or her, oh, if you do this, ah, you'll be caught. Do it this way. You don't go with them. See, you are the brain behind that robbery. Let us say that which is right. If it is no, open your mouth and say no. Because when good people fail to talk and act, evil will increase in our world. You see, the, the darkness that is now taking over everything is because you and I, we have become dumb. We don't want to speak. We don't want to act. I pray that will not be like the sun of the king, Malchiah, who will agree that they should use his well to punish Jeremiah. Now there's another person who comes into the picture, Ebed Melech. Who is Ebed Melech? Ebed Melech was just a servant. He had no power, but he would go into the presence of the king and tell him, Steve, these people, they have conspired against Jeremiah, and what they are doing is not right. 
May you be an Ebed Melech. We must speak. When you go for meetings, speak. You have your phone. Social media is free. You only pay for data. Speak. Take good things. Don't be silent about the ills of society. Say your mind and let people know where you stand. The silence is defaming. You must speak clearly for people to know what is in your head and what is in your heart. Be an epic melech. So now Jeremiah is put in that well. We are told that the well was filled with a mud. He was not bothered. He could have complained against God. But he knew that this was what God had called him to. When God called Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1, he told him that, see, I'm going to make you one who will supplant people. You talk before kings, but again, you will suffer on my account. So when he was suffering, he knew that it was part of the package. Some of us, we don't just want to suffer. We want our lives to be filled with enjoyment. You cannot have it that way. You enjoy small, you suffer small. You enjoy small, you suffer small. That is life. If you are always looking for total happiness, I don't think you will get it. But make sure that when you are suffering, you suffer for a right cause. Now God will send a helper to bring Jeremiah out of the system. No matter where people have put you because of lies, because of the good things that you are doing, may God always send a helper to come to you. Amen. And this is what we responded over and over in our responsorial psalm. The Lord will never abandon you. He will never desert you. He will never forsake you. He told Isaiah, as you move through the water, I'll be with you. As you move through the fire, I'll be with you. And God will always be with his people. May the Lord be with you always. Amen. And remember the words of King David. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Remember in that system, the light might not be able to get down there. So it was dark. And Jeremiah too might have felt that that was the end. But even that, God was with him. May the Lord never abandon me and abandon you. May he show his faithfulness as we continue to serve him. Amen. Now in our gospel reading, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, talks about division. And it's rather surprising. Because at his birth, the angels who sing joy to the well. Peace to men of goodwill. So how come now he's telling us about division? You see, before Jesus came, we're all together in sin. We're doing the same thing and it was okay for us. Maybe you belong to a family that is very vengeful. When somebody hurts you, you must hurt the person back. Maybe you belong to a family that you offer sacrifices to idols. But now you have met Christ. And Christ has told you that these things are unacceptable. Now you go to your family. And your family says, ah, so when John did that thing to you, Charlie, what are we doing to John? Oh, I've forgiven John. Why then? You are forgiving John. I beg you. As soon as I heard that you had a problem with John, me and I'm prepared. I've been going to the gym. See my muscles. I'm ready to fight. And you are saying you are forgiven. No way. We must fight. So now your family wants you to come back to them. Because this is what you have been doing all over the years. But you know better because you have met Jesus. And you are saying, this is not the way for me. So there's going to be a division between you and your family. Because you have chosen to take a different path. So, there is a sacrifice that must be offered in your hometown. Last year, you sent 500 Ghana cities and they bought goat and sheep. This year, too, send the money and you say you are not sending. Hey, what is the matter? I'm not a Christian. Oh, you cannot be a Christian. We need your money. Send the money. So, you see the confusion that will happen because you are no longer with them. And you say you will not send the money. So, now they'll start fighting you. And the fighting will always be uneven. Three against two. Father against son. 
mother against daughter. There's no equality in this scenario. But what is important is that you must know why you are standing for Jesus. Standing for Jesus will mean that you must stand against the world. You cannot be like this. One leg here, the other leg there. No way. You must choose where you want to be. There's no double standard in serving God. You can't be cold and hot at the same time when you have mixed it. No. Choose where you want to be. So that the tender that is coming to strike will not be confused. You are here to where you have come here. Yeah. No, please. Choose your position. Now when the tender is coming, bra on you. Don't confuse the tender. I hope you are with me. So you must choose where you must be. There is nothing like double standard. You can't play this. You can't play that. But for those of us who have chosen to be with the Lord, we will have peace. So I'm obeying the commandment of God. You obey the commandment. So the two of us will have peace. But that, that person who is not obeying the commandment of God, that is where the fighting will be. But you see something? Let them fight. Let them do all that they can. Because yes, they can kill the body, but they cannot kill the share. Yeah. They cannot kill the I cannot hear you. I can't hear you. Yes, they can kill the body, but they cannot kill the... They can't kill your soul. Because that soul is not coming from them. It is coming from God. And if you have given yourself to God, see, your soul has been hidden in Christ, in God. Nobody can touch it. So choose this day whom you will serve. Whether you serve God who will give you peace, not as the world gives it. Or you choose to remain with the world and have the false sense of peace. That peace is not real. That peace is not deep. That peace is not perfect. That peace is so fragile that it can break at any time. But the peace that comes from God, that peace is real. That peace is deep. That peace cannot be broken. And may that peace dwell with you, with your family, and with your friends, now and forever. Amen.